Recording in progress. Sorry, it is good evening. It is 6.30 p.m. on June 20th, 2023 for a regular meeting of the Federal City Council. I certainly don't look like the mayor, but I am acting for this evening. Uh, and he wanted to let you all know that he's uh, very sorry he couldn't be here. Uh, it is his wife's birthday. He gives you, um, he's on vacation as this is his wife's birthday and he sends his regards and thanks. So thank you. So would you all now please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. So my name is Linda Kochmar. I'm the council president. I am sitting in for the mayor this evening. Be kind, <laughs> in case I forget anything. All right. The first item on the agenda is emerging issues and report. So the first emerging issue we have is Red, White, and Blues Festival at Celebration Park on July the 4th. Do we have a report from John Hutton? He's our parks director. Thank you, Council President. And I'll be very brief, but I just want to invite the entire community out on Red, White, and Blues Day, July 4th. Uh, it is a fantastic show with all kinds of great entertainment, great food, family games, tons of fun for the whole family, super safe, and we'd love to have you out there. Uh, the event starts at 4 o'clock. We have great bands all evening long, starting at 4. And uh, I just am extending an invitation to the entire community. Please come out and enjoy yourself. This is the 20 eighth annual. We missed two for COVID. So uh, it's a great event and it's our largest event between 20 and 25,000 people a year. It is a fun time at Celebration Park. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, John. So I uh, just want to let you all know that that's a wonderful event. You're all, it's free. We have vendors that are there. We have music, wonderful time. And uh, the uh, show starts, starts at four, but the show starts uh, for the uh, about 10 p.m. usually when it's when it's dark. And I do want to mention that Susan Honda, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda, has joined us online. Hi, Susan. <laughs> She's at a conference in Spokane on behalf of the city. So our next item on the agenda is a report on Rising from the Dust, a community celebration held on June 13. That was a wonderful event. Um, Rising from the Dust is referring to the what we call the old Target building. So where the Performing Arts Center is is actually where the old Toys R Us building was. And that vacant building on the same piece of property is the old Target building. And so we are going to be demolishing that. Uh, we had an event where we talked about how we were going to demolish it. And we had some speakers. And uh, over the next few months or so, you're going to see that come down gradually. So it won't be a lot of dust, but it, it pretty soon it won't be there anymore, and you'll be amazed when it's gone. So thank you very much. And now the next is our Juneteenth events, the flag raising at City Hall on June 16th. Is Keith Niven here? Is he here to talk about that? Um, uh, Council President, I think I was going to say something on uh, the rising from the dust, but I think you covered that oh. adequately. <laughs> so. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not prepared to talk about the Juneteenth events. <laughs> Sorry. Like I said, <laughs> I get confused. So, okay, I'm going to talk about the Juneteenth event at City Hall when we had the flag raising. Thank you very much for all the people who are here. Now, the Juneteenth event, uh, you know, commemorates uh, the end of uh, slavery in America. That was um, actually uh, at the end of the Civil War when people uh, went to war uh, and changed our nation for the better. And so we had a wonderful event at, uh, at noon here, rising, uh, raising the flag for the Juneteenth event. And then Tierra Itahosa had another event on Monday at um, Dumas Bay Theater, uh, Dumas Bay Center, talking about, um, at the Knudsen Theater, uh, giving some awards out to people who have been very instrumental uh, in their own way in uh, making our community a better place to live. So thank you to all those who are involved in the Juneteenth 
Juneteenth events. Flag Day celebration at the King County Aquatic Center on June 17th. Uh, could I talk about that? Please, go ahead. Thank you. So this was uh, the Seroptimus Club of Federal Way holds this event. It was our 34th annual Flag Day event. Congressman Adam Smith spoke, Mayor Farrell spoke. Uh, we had Pastor Joe Bowman, and we had two veterans, two women veterans. Um, our school board president, Trudy Davis, spoke about her time in the military and what the flag means to her. And veteran Melissa Swan, who was our Live Your Dream Award winner this year for the Seroptimus Club, spoke about her time in the military and her continued time in the National Guard. And she currently works for Public Health of King County uh, when she's not serving in the National Guard. And I talked about what the flag meant to them. We had Scott Troops 307 and 361 participating and the Federal Way Corral sang beautiful music for us. Uh, we would like to thank Mike Dunwoody and staff at the Aquatic Center. They have, I believe Mike has been to every single Flag Day celebration and has, he just does an amazing job of setting up and supporting the club and his staff is right there with him. And of course the Seroptimus Club uh, for continuing to do this event. It means a lot to the community. And um, if you missed it, we'll be in the same place next year, year 35. We look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Make Music for the Way event will be held at Town Square Park on June the 24th. And we're going to have a proclamation about that a little bit later in the agenda. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and then our next, I would just want to let you all know that our next council meeting is actually scheduled for July 4th. So in case you don't want to be here on July 4th, we're going to actually hold it on July 5th. So don't come to City Hall on the 4th. It's a Tuesday. But on Wednesday, July 4th, we'll be here. To welcome all of you. Now, uh, we do have a presentation later in the agenda, unless the council, um, uh, if, if you will agree, I would like to move that forward. It's the proclamation um, recognition of the Municipal Court Student Art Contest winners. Uh, Judge Larson, and ju are there any, do you mind moving that forward on the agenda? So, it's, so we're, not, we're not making a, a motion, we're just moving it forward, if it's okay with all of you. Yeah. We're going to have um, Judge Larson and Judge uh, Bales coming for the recognition of the Municipal Court Student Art Contest winners. Council President and Deputy Mayor Susan Honda and Council, thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Cassie Swan and I am the Arts and Events Coordinator here at the City. And I would like to present to you our winners for this year's Municipal Student Court Art Contest. Uh, before we announce the winners, I would like to pass it over to Judge Larson, who will take a few minutes to explain what this contest is all about. Thank you, Cassie. Um, thank you, uh, Council, for supporting this uh, for, since 2009. Uh, it's been, been around that long. And thank you for allowing us to come and present the recipients each year since then. COVID, I think, the first year of COVID, I don't think we did it. But the inspiration for this, as you know, many people have forgotten, I came from the school board when I became a judge here. That was my last position. And so the natural uh, idea was to, was to maintain a relationship with the school district. Through this and other things, uh, we have maintained that relationship. And it's been something that uh, I invite anybody in the, uh, in the audience that are on, or listening to come to the court anytime because the past recipients of work is in courtroom two, courtroom three, and in the lobby. And the, eventually the recipients uh, that will receive uh, awards tonight will be peppered throughout the, the courthouse. And one thing about courts is we have to be open under the Constitution. We can't be closed. So we're open to the public. Anybody can come in and watch court anytime. And so you can come in and look at any of the artwork um, and, uh, uh, and uh, enjoy the uh, work of the of the students that have are now because it's uh, 14 years later are now you know adults out uh, productively uh, making their way through society and so um, it's with pleasure that uh, we're here tonight. Judge Bales uh, and I will be handing the awards to the uh, 
to the recipients. But again, I just wanted to uh, express my appreciation to you as a council for supporting it uh, all these years and for the Arts Commission because they're the ones that uh, Judge Bales and I just have to show up and uh, they're the ones that do all the real work, uh, the, the judging, rece receiving the, the, uh, re uh, the submissions, advertising, all those things that lead us here tonight are done by the Arts Commission and so um, the, the, the mass amount of credit uh, goes to them. So with that, I'm gonna uh, turn it back over to Cassie. I'm just going to pull up our presentation here. I might just mention that they have the same kind of an art contest uh, in Washington, D.C. in the congressional uh, offices. And so if you ever want to talk to your congressman, uh, for you in this district is Adam Smith, uh, and submit art. Um, it's wonderful when we go back to Washington, D.C. to see art from our students in the, it's actually in the, under the, under, uh, in the tunnels under the state capitol. It's very, very, it's wonderful to see our students' art there. All right, so we had over 20 submissions and then we picked the top three. So the top three from elementary schools throughout Federal Way and the top three from middle schools. So I'm going to begin. There are a couple students not here with us this evening due to illness or other obligations, but I will begin. And then once your student's name is called, if you could please come up and receive your certificate and then you could take a photo, and then at the end, we will all take a photo in front of the dais. All right, our first winner, first place for middle um, elementary school was Sahaj, and she was first grade, and this was, I believe, called titled Flowers. And she's not here with us tonight. Our next second place elementary was I Have Freedom of Choice, and this was by Tiffany Lee. Tiffany, would you please come up? Awesome. Our third place elementary school winner was Azarij Boyko, third grade at Silver Lake Elementary. He's not with us this evening. It's pretty amazing to see the work that these students do. And on to middle school, what liberty means to me. This was first place, Daniel Huss, sixth grade, Federal Way Public Academy. Then we had second place, freedom of speech, and this was Aaliyah Perkins, seventh grade at Sequoia Middle School. And finally, we had third place, life, love, and liberty by Trinity Yamada, seventh grade, St. Vincent de Paul. Let's give all these students one last round of applause for their entries. Awesome, thank you. And now if we could all gather in the middle of the dais in front of Ms. Coach so, Mar. Thank you very much. This is what community is all about. This is wonderful. Yeah. So Council, if you'll come and stand behind our, our well, do you want us to stay here, Kathy? Yes. Okay, we'll just stand here then. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll find your pictures in our city newsletter before you know it. Thank you, and thank you to the parents. You're doing a wonderful job with your children. Good job. So, Judge, you're going to have a reception next door now for... We had one earlier. This involves a tour of the court and everything, too, including okay. the holding cells and all that. 
Oh. So, uh, Is anybody in them? No, no, they, there were. But okay. we had that earlier, and okay. they uh, each got to wear a robe and oh. got to be called judge. And so, <laughs> anyway. The, the, the kids that weren't present didn't get stuck there. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Well, I pre again, much appreciation. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. So now we're moving forward in the agenda to the next item, which is public comment. When I call your name, will you please come forward to the uh, podium? Uh, state your name and just simply say if you live in the city of Federal Way. That's all you need to say. Uh, thank you for. If you want to speak this evening, you still have time to fill out a pink sheet. All right, first one in no particular order is Cheryl Monk. Thank you, everybody. Um, my name is Cheryl Monk, and I've lived in Federal Way pretty much almost 40 years. And um, I noticed that uh, a few years ago, I will say, when COVID started, we started collecting recycling. And we had so much recycling that we were sticking it in our garage, waiting. The bins would be full, and the bins would be full. Time passed, and I thought, gosh almighty, this is really more than, I wonder, you know, what's the deal? Why don't they come every week? So I called the garbage company, and the garbage company told us that we do, they do have contracts with some cities that have recycling every week. They pick it up every week. But that Federal Way was an every other week uh, contract. And that if I was interested in, in changing it, I ought to come to the city council. So a year and a half later, <laughs> I'm not quick, um, I finally get here, and I, I guess I'm wondering, I have a few questions. Um, is it, how much is the contract that we have? Is it almost up? Would we be interested in looking at uh, whether the city of Federal Way would be interested in having a different contract that might be every week? You know, these are just some questions that I have. I really don't know what my next steps would be, uh, but if people have interest, then um, I might try to find out what next steps are. I know I have lots. Tonight I was leaving it in the kitchen to go to the bin in the garage, to be stuck somewhere else in the garage, to finally get down to the streets. And so it reminded me how important that it is, in, at least in our life. So that's my comments. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, Brian, is there anybody that could, is, who are we pointing e at? EJ. EJ. So EJ, maybe you could contact Cheryl here. I'll give her my business card when we get done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Next person is um, June Bake, and after that is Kevin Morris. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. I, I'm from Korea. Uh, if my English is not so good, please understand. Yes. I, Come <coughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jun Beck. I'm the CEO of Mubin. Uh, I'm the uh, manufacturer of top quality is uh, safety gloves and glasses. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm coming here to talk about the needle stick injuries. Yeah, needle stick injuries are a significant concern. Hmm? We done, uh, oh, this is needle, yes. Uh, we we uh, estimate 385,000 uh, incidents occurring annually in the U.S. And it's uh, around 25% occurring in the uh, outside healthcare industries. Hmm? And is that affecting various industries like uh, the law enforcement and is uh, waste disposal. For example, police officers as can be exposed to needle, is a needle, needle pricks, is a while is a arrest and is a investigation, and it's cleaning workers also is a, is a, it can be exposed to the is a while is a <coughs> disposing is a uh, dis discarded syringes, mm. and these accidents are particularly critical mm. due to the rising number of drug users. In 2020, it's uh, around uh, 1.2 million people uh, used syringes drug. 
and is uh, uh, among them is uh, a six. 640,000 people is a uh, uh, shared leader. Is the sharing leader is supposed to severe is a uh, uh, health risks including HIV and hepatitis infections. And is the rate of leadership injuries is a decrease, but is among the drug users is increasing. So it's a uh, uh, because of drug users, yes. and it's a uh, it's impacted. Impacted directly to the, the law enforcement and clean workers as well. But fortunately, we have the solution. It's, a, it's a, the, the kind of solutions. It's a, wearing the proper needleproof gloves is is the best way to prevent is from the needle is a pricks and needle is a sticks. It's done, okay. And it's a, I wanted to emphasize the seriousness and is a. a the cost associated with industry injuries and higher change is uh, the uh, effectiveness of wearing a post is, is uh, very important. We are uh, developed these gloves due to is uh, uh, with uh, the request of the uh, waste cleaning workers strong request. Thank you very much. Thank, Mr. J just one moment, um, Brian. So I think he's talking about needle stick injuries, and we have uh, some Korean uh, youngsters who go around and especially in the H Mart area and they're worried about needle stick injuries. So do we have any of those kinds of gloves we can give them to use? I, I can connect with him. I'm sorry? I, I can connect with him. And, okay, yeah. all right, he'll, he'll, our, our city manager will talk to you after. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, which means thank you in Korean. Thank you very much. Okay, next is Kevin Morris. And following Kevin will be Mary Alis and uh, Anne Michelle Hart. President Koshmar, Council, uh, that's a hard act to follow there. <laughs> wearing gloves, to pick up needles. Uh, tonight I'm wearing my thin blue lined cap, and I want to talk a little bit about crime. And then it's going to be, it has been uh, just about every meeting, a big conversation. Small businesses in federal way have had enough of the crime, enough of ATM cases being torn out of their stores, the Ace Hardware store on 21st, the Port of Ireland restaurant in federal way ripped out 20 feet from, the, from inside their restaurant. They'll be here at the next meeting to talk about that with video. But as much as I respect, and I will always respect Chief Wong and your staff. We need to take the lead to show the rest of the community, not just our community, but other communities, that we're doing something about this crime that's going on. And one thing that, that I think most people know or may not know is that with all of this that's been going on, especially with gun control legislation, people have been, more and more people have been buying firearms for the first time in their life for fear that they want to have something to protect themselves in their home. And they're applying for and received concealed carry permits to carry those firearms. And the largest and frankly, I think most respected gun shop and range and instruction facility in Federal Way, that's Federal Way Discount Guns, is being sued by Attorney General Ferguson. They want to take him down. The man's a good man. I've worked with him, I've known him for a long time, and I know that they cross every T and dot every I when it comes to filling out registration forms and doing the right thing when it comes to dealing with ATF and registrations and firearms. He's fighting it, and I would, just, I would like the public here and also that's watching on TV to consider supporting and, and finding out a little bit more about him and his business. The small businesses are the ones that are being, being hurt, of course, CVS and Walmart and, 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 and Walgreens. Walgreens have been crashed into. Twin Lakes Country Club was crashed in and a safe was taken out just a few weeks ago. It's getting ridiculous. That's it. I got my number. Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. Um, uh, Chief Wong, I don't know if you want to speak with Kevin. I don't know if you've already spoken with him. Uh, he's particularly interested in Puerto Vallarta and what's going on there. They've yeah. been broken into five times. Yeah, I would tell you that in law enforcement, we're equally as fr frustrated yeah. with these crimes. When we catch them in the act, we simply can't chase them. We have to let them go. That's the current state law. 
I think as policy group, as a police chief, I've been very active to have influence at the state level. We told the community and lawmakers that this would happen. This is a new crime trend where suspects are stealing vehicles, they're ramming businesses, stealing everything they can, knowing that we can't chase them middle of the night. So yes, I share their concern. I want to assure the community that the men and women of the Federal Way Police Department are working hard every single day to keep our community safe. But we need help from the policy group. Yeah. Poor policy decisions result in these kind of outcomes. Thank you. And I think we've been very clear about that. Thank you very much, Chief. I'm wondering, is there any information we can give them about how to harden their a business, hardening? I, I don't know whether, you know, bars at night. I mean, terrible thinking about that. Sure. We, but, we, we work with our business community on a regular basis. We right. try to be very responsive. But, yes, it is a crime trend that we are concerned about. Yeah. We need to address it. Thank, thank you very much. Oh, next we have Mary Ellis. Thank you. I'm Mary Ellis, and I'm the president of the Historical Society of Federal Way, and I'm just here to invite you because we've been working with John Hutton on a memorandum of understanding, and he's encouraging us to get going. And so what we're doing is uh, we're taking on a new theme. Anybody that's been to the Heritage Center at Steel Lake Park, um, we're taking on a new theme there, and we're going to be more open to the public. And uh, our theme is before the internet, because when I talk to kids, they're like, what? What would I do without a phone? Well, we'll come show you, <laughs> you know, a cell phone, that is. So um, it is on June 29th, which is a Thursday night from, well, 4.30 to 7.30. We'll have some fun things, some munchies, and we'd love to have you come see how we're changing it over into an interactive museum. And so I do have flyers downstairs. So if you're interested, please do pick it up. Give us a notice. We also have, and I'd like Annette Hillman to stand up. We have a new administrator that came to us from Green River. And she has just accepted the job. And so we now have another newsletter out. So these will be downstairs too. So we have some fun things we're working on, encouraging people to come out and help with Camp Kilworth. We're also working with Tanya Carter to uh, get people to give us their first in federal way. So please do that. And just come out and join in the fun. It's, it'll be, it'll be a, a process, but, and if you have talents, stories, something interesting to share, your skills, please let us know. We need people to come on in and help us get it open and have some fun activities and just keep a, keep a fun summer going. So join us on June 29th, which is a Thursday night, 4.30 to 7.30 at the Heritage House, which is the Steel Lake Annex. So anybody that's been to Steel Lake, don't go left, go to the right, the little brick building is ours. Well, it's the city's, but we work with them on that. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to new and better beginnings with the Historical Society. Yeah, yeah we're, we're looking forward to it, too. And anybody that hasn't been to the cabins, they're open on the, in the Hylobos wetlands. They're open on the third Saturday of each month from, 12, from 11 to 3. So there's some fun things to do there. But we really want to share with people that uh, we all manage to prosper and get our jobs done and all and we didn't have the internet not that it's a bad thing but we're going to show people what we did without it so come join us thank you very much mary okay and deputy mayor honda i can see you so if there's anything you want to say just raise your hand okay so and michelle hart thank you city council I wanted to congratulate you on the Rising from the Dust event. We had a lot of fun going out there, and of course I brought my very old pickaxe, and Dave and I stood out on the barriers and kind of made like we were gonna swing at the building. So we're very happy about uh, keeping the, the city residents informed on what's gonna happen with that property. Um, we'd also like to congratulate you on keeping the residents open to providing you comments on what should happen with our downtown. I am so happy that one time we're not gonna be able to do this on downtown, we're actually gonna have a downtown. So making sure to keep the city residents uh, giving you suggestions on what should be up there is really important. Um, also, the organizations in town would also love to provide you input on what we think the citizens should want up there. So we're willing to help and, and lend a hand anytime you ask us for that. One of the things that, uh, it's funny, we just had the, the uh, Historical Society up here. 
in the interest of being uh, very transparent, how about putting a webcam on top of the pack so we can see the everything that's happening on there, and then the Historical Society can take snippets as we go along and do a, a fun s smush video on what happens up there. Um, we thought that would be great just for the people who have been following the Federal Way Public Market trying to, to know what's happening up there, but we thought that would be a great way for not only the general public to weigh in and see where it is every now and then, but also to see a compressed video of start to finish. Thank you. You might want to talk to our communications director back there, David Salomo, and he can maybe talk We, th to we thought about going up there and doing one and then asking for permission. We thought that would be a bad uh, idea. No, I'm not again. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, we're about doing things the right way. <laughs> um, but, but thank you, and we're looking forward to being a part of having our new downtown prosperous and something that all the residents can enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Council okay. President. Yes, sir. Um, a camera on top of the pack is uh, such a good idea that we actually installed one last week. So. Oh. Um, that's hey, and Michelle. In fact, while I'm on, this, if I'm on the subject, uh, on our city page, there is a, a link to the uh, our newsletters that go out every week, and that was featured in the I think two newsletters ago. So if anyone wants to just get caught up on city um, happenings, we have a new city newsletter that's going out, and that was on the top of the fold story, so to speak, uh, two weeks ago of the camera on top of the pack. So thank you, thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we next have uh, Jen Barber. Uh, we have our kazoos here. And right after her will be Jeffrey Tancredi. Uh, was, this to, was this to be? Good evening, Council President, <laughs> members of the Thank City you. Council. And I am very glad to, to mentioned to you tonight that we will be having our fifth Make Music Federal Way. It will be tomorrow. We're going to have some pop-up performances starting at 10 o'clock at the Nitri Sub-Zero Nitrogen Ice Cream <laughs> place. And our council member will be singing a solo. <laughs> uh, then we will be <coughs> Oh, we will be doing more at a couple of other places, including 2 o'clock in the afternoon. There will be a free drumming class, and I hope we, uh, at the Federal Way School of Music. This is part of a worldwide celebration of the first day of summer, and we're all hoping it will be warm. <laughs> On Saturday, uh, you are all welcome to a free festival of music that will be at Town Square Park between three and eight. There will be a 17-piece swing band. There will be Japanese drummers, courtesy of uh, Lion uh, Lisa Akeda. And participating with us tonight is Stacy O'Shea. She, uh, I will let her, she is a adult supervisor at the, I will let her um, explain what she <laughs> Hello, Stacy O'Shea, and the long title that is so confusing is Library and Information Services Manager at the Federal Way Library. Um, and we are very excited to be in our third year participating with the Lions and Make Music Day and Week. So I wanted to let you know, right now, Ukulele Startup for Beginners is happening at the library. But tomorrow, we have Pamela's Didgeridoo show from 5 to 6 and also um, and the sound booth open house in our sound booth in the makerspace. So it's a good chance to come check out the library, check out our sound booth, check out some of the equipment that we have. It's very exciting. And then also um, on Thursday at the Federal Way 320th Library, we have a community sing-along with Miss Jerry, who used to do, um, she's retired now, but she was the children's librarian for many, many years at the 320th Library. And she would love to see you. And we're out of time. <laughs> Thank you so well, much. Thank, thank you both very much. And all of the chartreuse uh, jackets there, those are all the Lions Club members. Raise your hands as if we couldn't see you. <laughs> right. Okay. And the council member she, that Jan was referring to was, of course, Jack Walsh. <laughs> we all have our gifts, and Jack has a wonderful gift of singing. So thank you. Thank you. Don't go away because and you've got your kazoo. I see that. Uh, don't go away because we'll be giving a proclamation here in a few minutes. So thank you very much. Uh, Joffrey jo Tancredi?
<laughs> Good evening, Jeff Tancredi, uh, Federal Way resident. Good evening, Council President Kochmar and Council members, Chief Wang. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Erica Norton. Uh, she, you know, we all know she resigned recently. Uh, early on in her time as a council member, she organized uh, some meetings uh, with Stand Up Federal Way and the Black Collective, uh, Progress Pushers, some other organizations. And, uh, you know, she did that because she wanted to bring, bridge the gap, uh, because there may be some differences in the way uh, different groups and organizations look at different things. So uh, I, you know, I was uh, very impressed with the fact that she had organized that meeting. The first one was over at, at the uh, community center. And it was a lot of people in the room, and I got a chance to meet some great Americans like uh, Evan Cook, who's the head of the Black Collective, um, <clears throat> Jeremy Windsor from Progress Pushers. So I thought that was uh, very admirable of, uh, of uh, Erica to do that. And also, uh, she helped, uh, I think she helped to guide uh, Catrice Dennis. Those of you that know Catrice, she has this school is sort of like a, it's a home school, uh, preschool to third grade. Uh, she helped Catrice Dennis get a grant from the United Way because it's a uh, for-profit, so she has to rely on donations. Uh, that is an amazing school. Um, and in, so anyway, I was, I'm very thankful to Erica for helping Catrice Dennis get some funding for her school. So um, anyway, I, I don't think she's done. I Hopefully she'll... Uh, She'll have something in her future because she is, uh, has a lot of passion, and uh, so. But we'll miss her in the meantime. Thank you. Appreciate. Okay. Thank you, and we certainly appreciate you. Thank you very much. So the next uh, two people coming up: Susan Strong and Nancy Justice. Deputy Mayor Honda, City Council President Kochmar, Council Members. I'm Susan Strong and I live in Federway. I've been a resident of Federway since 1975. I chose to move to Federway because it was close to where I worked at the SeaTac Airport. When I moved here, I was greatly appreciative of the wide roads and the free parking. It almost felt like I'd moved to the country. From time to time, I would see someone on horseback riding down Southwest Dash Point Road. The Commons Mall had not been built. Southwest 320th Street heading west was not paved past 21st Avenue going into Twin Lakes. I couldn't get over that one. A lot has changed since 1975. Our po population has grown close to 100,000 residents. Many new housing developments have been built. Gradually, over a number of years, we have acquired a number of homeless people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol. Some of these people also have mental health issues. Along with the homeless situation, we now have people who steal from, rob, murder, intimidate, and harass residents of Federal Way and surrounding cities. The situation is so acute that I no longer feel safe living here. Never in my mind did I imagine I would not feel safe living in Washington State where I was born and raised. I believe that we have a growing drug problem. The situation is growing worse each week i encourage the council to do whatever they can to get control of the drug drug problem in federal way thank you thank you very much susan I, I think many of us agree with you on that nancy justice good evening uh council president and council um I'm a resident of Federal Way, born here in 63. Oh, I gave away my age. Anyway, I'm speaking on behalf of the Safeway at 320th. Um, on Saturday, I was part of a litter pick with Stand Up Federal Way community. And when you have feet on the street, you see things from a different perspective. You can't get from just driving through. When I'm out and I see a business that has or is being affected by things that are bad for business, I'll go in and I will talk to them. It's very interesting, the conversations that can be had. Uh, one of these conversations was on the topic of trespass. 
there was a young man who'd been trespassed from Safeway 320th, and he had returned three times. And at last calling, the management was told that there was nowhere to take him. Essentially, nothing could be done because he had a wound on his leg. <coughs> so there's nowhere to take him, and he's hanging out on the property and somehow breaks open his wound and bleeds out in front of the store. And Safeway has to pull out their hazmat kit to clean up the mess. How is it there's nowhere safe to take him, yet it's safe for business and, their, and the public in general? Um, he's but one example. Um, that area has fallen into a bad light recently. It's not unusual to go there and see people walking out with stolen goods or openly doing their drugs. I've called the police for those offenses several times myself. In addition, the continual return of campers has been a problem for the West parking lot. It is a repeat process to move them along. I know the camper issue not only affects Safeway, I see their presence being monitored and of concern to many people on social media at many places around town. Can we come up with a better solution rather than play whack-a-mole? I don't want to discount that some people may be camping, but speaking in general, more often than not, there's an unwanted element that comes with their presence. A comment was made on social media the other day. Uh, it was, why do businesses allow this loitering? Uh, having just had the conversation with the Safeway management, I felt I needed to clarify that it's not something they allow, but something that they fight daily. They are struggling. They need help. Businesses and customers alike are equally frustrated. Also, Safeway had a fire behind their building, I think it was last week. And I was just getting to the green bins, but I'm gonna have to save that for another time. That's another big issue around town and what it attracts. Thank you, thank you very much, Nancy. So Brian, I'm wondering if there isn't, if we couldn't talk to the mayor about somehow having a business summit with our businesses to talk about what we can do. I mean, I've, I've had a meeting personally with the two Walmart managers, and it was actually at their request. Um, but I'm wondering if we shouldn't have some kind of a business summit, invite a number of different business uh, managers, because the, the owners won't come, it's the managers, and talk about the issues. Yeah, we can connect with Mayor when he gets back and... Okay, I, I will too, thank you. I don't know if that'll help Nancy, but we'll certainly try. Dara Mandeville. Good evening. Um, my name is Dara Mandeville. I've been in Better Way since 1999. I'm not doing math tonight. So a um, few things. Um, my first ask is for our council members that are here, and Susan, if you're listening, um, to please use a lot of thought and discretion when you guys appoint um, the missing, the, the, the empty seat on the council. I know that a lot of people applied. Um, so as a concerned citizen and as an involved citizen, um, I'm hoping that we can be, as the community, we can be part of that process and I'm asking you to use your best judgment. Um, another thing is um, I, I watched some of the recording and, and read over some of the recap of Mayor Farrell's, I don't remember, it was the, the Target Building Demolition Presentation Day, that whole pomp and circumstance. I was really frustrated. <laughs> it's so hard as a business owner of this in this city. It's so hard to watch him stand up there and talk about new city halls and new police stations, which I know they need it, um, um, and and parking garages and bringing all these huge businesses into our city. Nobody wants to come here. We, I mean. Every business, every other business driving down the street, broken glass, or can we please focus on public safety? Our poor officer, not poor, <laughs> our, our police department, I mean, you know, we read about it on social media or, you know, however we get our news from, but they're dealing with this and I feel like they're just treading water. I know that our police department is not where 
um, the 1.6 officers per whatever the, the ratio is. I know it's not there. Um, and I feel like the city, we're just spending money on stuff when at the end of the day, none of it's going to matter because we're all going to leave. I could name five people off the top of my head that have lived here most of their whole lives and are gone um, or planning on leaving because people don't want to raise their families here anymore. Um, another concern, and I kind of brought, the, brought this up a meeting two ago, I think, is I feel that the public perception, not those of us that are at all of the meetings, but um, I specifically wanted to talk to you, Chief, that I feel like a lot of people in our community don't know exactly how tied the hands of our officers are. And I wonder if like a forum or a community safety police forum, because I mean, I'm forever, forever arguing online about this isn't our officers, you guys, our legislators have tied their hands. And I feel like if we could have a forum or some sort of something that they can hear it from our officers mouths that, that, you know, like you said, Andy, that, you know, you, you can't chase them. So, um, and I feel like people don't understand that. So, um, and I had more, but I'm too yucky. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dara. I, that's another good idea. Maybe Brian could take that forward also to the mayor. So we have two more, uh, three more people. Just two. Barbara Mast, and the final person will be Anna Patrick. Uh, yes, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Barbara Marsh. I've been a resident of Federal Way for 27 years. I'm here just to encourage the council. I know later um, in the meeting you're going to be listening and hearing more information about what the land use um, group has recommended for changes for ADUs. And I just wanted to be the face of, you know, someone here that wants the changes. Uh, we have an adult special needs uh, child. Uh, we want him to be independent, but he can't necessarily live by himself. And we would really like to be able to put a decent size ADU in our backyard. Uh, current rules, we have a 1450 square foot house. You're only allowed to have a certain percentage um, on the property, even though we have a fairly large property, which means we could have somewhere in the 500 square foot range. Um, you know, we're hoping you'll change the rules where we can have something bigger. I know they recommended that um, a lot of the costs would be brought down for permits and you know it just it, it's a problem for for parents of special needs kids it's probably a problem for um you know seniors that uh you know senior elder care you know it's it's just a problem that we need fixed um the city it's just too expensive and so we're just hoping you will vote on these new rules tonight thank you well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for telling us about your child. Uh, believe it or not, there are other people in Federal Way that already have uh, ADUs on their property for um, their special needs child. I'm a special needs grandparent, and my 19-year-old just texted me how proud she was that she just got a part-time job greeting people at a bookstore for the summer. And my goodness, all of our children, we want all of our children to do well, but sometimes those children that try so hard just to be, to fit in. You know, you have to keep praising them because they have to work so hard just to get a little bit out of life. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, hon. Thank you. All right. So we finally have Anna Patrick. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to say something really quick. Um, I'm wondering, I was just kind of thinking about this, um, is there a way that, has the city considered um, trying to lobby for the right kinds of permanent supportive housing and shelters that work for our city that we, that we would approve of? <laughs> so I just, you know, I know we have these zoning rules and maybe if we could kind of get ahead of it instead of letting things happen to us. 
sometimes we do. So just being proactive and looking into what's out there and, and then figuring out what the needs are in our city. Like, um, you know, there's, there's more to permanent supportive housing than serving uh, drug addicted individuals. There's other people in our community that need that type of housing. Um, so maybe if we could kind of look at what's out there and maybe figure out a way to kind of be proactive. So I just wanted, and, and then I just wanted to just, just comment on that citywide news. I was just looking at the citywide news tonight and I liked seeing the staff and I liked seeing um, the features of the staff members. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, the, the years of service, and I imagine it's probably a kind of nice to, to see that for staff too, um, kind of a, a good thing. And um, just, you know, I know we have to, it's a, it's a hard balance, we have to um, uh, showcase the, the good things in our city, and I know there's a lot of good things, that's why a lot of us still live here. Um, and I know we talk about the crime and everything, but, and, and we do, we really have to make sure that we're addressing that because without addressing the crime it's hard to have everything else follow and we are getting some good things in the city um, I'd like to see that continue and just just want to speak to being proactive in all those ways thank, thank you, you very much thank you for the suggestion Anna. appreciate that is there anybody else who would like to speak this evening uh, Stephanie do we have anybody online no one that signed up for public comment no all right, thank you. Well, thank you all for speaking this evening. Thank you for, we have some good suggestions this evening, so thank you very much. So now we'll move on with the agenda. The next item, oh my goodness, we're going to have proclamation, make music federal way. So, Mr. Council Member Walsh. Uh, actually, I think oh, a, I was oh, going Stephanie to read that. Mayor. That's right, thank you. Go ahead, thank Deputy you. Mayor. Uh, so I'd like to invite uh, uh, Make Music Federal Way Committee member Leah Christian, Director of Federal Way School of Music, and Stacey O'Shea, Federal Way Public Library, and Jan Barber to the podium. And as they're walking to the podium, I will read the proclamation. Make Music Federal Way. Whereas Make Music Federal Way is a wonderful festival that celebrates the ability of everyone to make music, presented locally by the City of Federal Way, the Federal Way Lions Club, the libraries located at 320th and 1st Avenue South, and the Federal Way Arts Commission. And whereas Make Music Federal Way is a day of music making in public spaces all throughout the City of Federal Way, all completely free for musicians and audiences alike. And whereas the fifth annual Make Music Federal Way events will be celebrated with pop-up events on Wednesday, June 21st, and the festival on Saturday, June 24th, 2023, inspired by local artists. And whereas Make Music Federal Way involves musicians, bands, and ensembles from a diverse area, array of styles and genres, creating an opportunity to unite through the language of music, and now, therefore, we, the undersigned mayor and city council members of the City of Federal Way, do hereby proclaim June 21st, 2023, as Make Music Federal Way Day. And we encourage our community to celebrate the joyfulness that music brings by coming together on June 21st and June 24th, 2023, signed this 20th day of June 2023. And I would personally personally like to thank the Lions Club and especially Jan for all of the work she has put into this year after year it's getting bigger she's uh she's amazing we are so lucky that we have this event in our community so thank you Jan and thank you to the Lions Club so thank you very much Deputy Mayor and uh, don't go away because Councilmember Walsh is coming down to make the presentation this would be the time to take the picture <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> she <laughs> go, go, go ahead and explain. Right. Tonight, all of you uh, who are seated at the 
at the half circle, you had a little plastic. Uh, <clears throat> this item is called a kazoo, and it was originally found, designed in uh, Georgia, and it was called something like a submarine. And the way you play it, and you don't have to do it right now, you hum into it. Oh, you <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> and thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Jan. I have a six-year-old granddaughter that's going to love this. <laughs> Her parents not. It, it takes a team, and my, our president, uh, Frank James, has been behind this from the beginning, and uh, I'd like him to say a word. Uh, city Council and the mayor, who I don't see, I just want to say, uh, as a representative of Federal Way Lions Club, to thank you guys for the support. The Art Commission, uh, and look forward to seeing you on Saturday. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Frank. Thank you all for all your hard work. Thank you. Do it in the front. Okay. Stacy. Denise. the ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're moving on uh, in the agenda. The next item on the agenda is um, Council Committee and Regional Committee Reports. Council Member Walsh. Right. The, uh, uh, the Parks, Recreation, uh, Human Services, and Public Safety uh, Committee met a week ago this evening. Uh, had a good meeting. Items C through L on the consent agenda all came from that meeting. We had a, had a busy, busy meeting. Our uh, next meeting will be, um, and I should have it right here, our oops. my apologies here. I was down trying to make music down there, so instead of uh, our uh, next meeting will be on the on uh, July 11th, right here at five o'clock. Thank you very much, Councilmember. Uh, next is Land Use and Transportation Committee, uh, Councilmember Dovey. Yes. Uh, You'll see a lot on the agenda tonight that we've been going through land use, which has to do with ADUs and uh, some zoning, which all of you have been involved in. We're, that hits tonight. Uh, July 10th will be our next meeting, and we'll continue down the path of some different zoning discussions and uh, public works discussions as we continue our journey through the year of making Federal Way a more desirable place for builders to want to build in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member. So, uh, Finance and Economic Development is Councilmember Pontran. Thank you, Council President. Um, our next meeting is going to be on July 27, 2023, at 5 p.m. in this room. Thank you. Councilmember Stephanie Dawson for the lodging tax. Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, we lost one member from our from our LTAC committee, a hotelier, so we're now back to trying to replace that position. And um, our next meeting is going to be July 12th at 10 a.m. Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, very much. And uh, Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. Um, I was going to talk about a number of things that I've done over the last few weeks and what's coming up, but uh, I've decided I'd rather talk about fireworks and Federal Way and the impact that fireworks have. Uh, with July 4th coming up, and with the weather as being as dry as it has been, we are in a pretty dangerous position. Even though we've had rain today and yesterday, we still have really dry conditions. In the past, I believe six years, there have been three houses that have been burned on um, or around 4th of July because of fireworks. There have been numerous fires and animals have been lost, people have been terrified, and it's already starting. It's already on social media, 
people begging their neighbors not to set off fireworks. They're illegal in the city of Federal Way, and they're illegal in unincorporated King County. So I would really encourage people to please be considerate. Please uh, follow the law. I personally, um, our family have had, we've had three fires behind our house because of fireworks. It's terrifying, it's scary. And I'm speaking for a lot of people in the city and an incorporated King County that would ask you to please not use fireworks. Um, of course, you can call the police. The police will come if, um, if they can identify where the fireworks are coming from. But we don't really want to cite people. We just want people to simply be safe. Uh, fireworks cause injuries. Every single year, people get hurt. They lose fingers. They can lose eyesight. Um, they're dangerous. And um, that, so that, that's my report. Um, other than I'm in Spokane for Association of Washington Cities, I've already had two meetings today and looking forward to the next three days full of meetings. So um, thanks very much and uh, enjoy 4th of July and please be safe. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. So uh, my, as Council President, my report is last. And uh, I'll simply say that um, We'll be joining you very soon, Deputy Mayor. Uh, we'll be leaving at, oh my goodness, getting up at four in the morning to go to Spokane for the last three days of the Association of Washington Cities Conference on behalf of the city. But I do wanna say that uh, we are trying, there are members here who have asked us before about having meetings with the school board. And uh, actually we've made progress. Uh, Deputy Mayor Honda and I have been meeting, and Council Member Walsh have been meeting with uh, two of the directors on a regular basis. Trudy Davis and Lakeisha Phillips. And we've uh, tentatively planned a coffee and conversations with the community. It's not a formal meeting at all. It's just a meeting, a meet and greet where you can come and talk to us personally, both uh, school board directors and council members. It'll be, uh, just put it on your calendars. It's not finalized yet, but we're talking about July 15th uh, at 11 a.m. at um, Ebony and Ivory Coffee Shop, which is over by the Warehouser uh, campus. And um, so it'll be a, a good time for you to come and, and talk to everybody. So thank you. Um, wish us well as we, uh, Council Member Sevadasa and I go to uh, Spokane in the morning. Uh, and we'll come back hopefully with some good suggestions for the city. So moving forward, um, we now are going to the consent agenda. All of the items uh, listed have been previously reviewed in their entirety by a council committee of three members and brought before the full council for approval. All items are enacted by one motion. Individual items may be removed by a council member for separate discussion and subsequent motion. So item A, minutes of the June 6th regular and special meeting minutes. Item B, Lakota Middle School safe routes to school, request for additional funds. Item C, request to transition the housing repair and minor home repair program to third party vendors and so solicit proposals. Item D, jail services in a local agreement with the Kent City Jail. Item E, police services agreement with the Commons Mall. Uh, item F, police services agreement with the Commons Mall, again. Um, item G, city access control upgrade, uh, request for proposal award. Item H, interlocal agreement with Public Health of Seattle King County for the South King Oops, County Mobile Medical Program. Sure. Item A, South King Housing Partners, 2024 work plan and budget. Item J, King County Regional Agreement Opioid Abatement Council Interlocal Agreement. Item K, security services for parks and facilities. Item uh, uh, L, Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Plan, Pros, Update, Brook Lake and Steel Lake Master Plans. And finally, item M, Resolution Intent to Designate the Community Business Zone a Residential Target Area for Purposes of the City's Multifamily Tax Exemption Program and Setting <coughs> a Public Hearing on July 18th. Uh, council members, does anyone want to pull an item from the agenda? Seeing none, Deputy Mayor Honda, do you have a, a motion? I move approval of the consent agenda items A through M. 
Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the uh, consent agenda. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Now we're moving forward to a public hearing. I will now open the public hearing regarding the 2024-2029 Transportation Improvement Plan. We will hear a staff report from City Traffic Engineer Rick Perez, followed by Council discussion and public comment. Item A, Resolution 2024-2029 Transportation Improvement Program Plan. Uh, Rick Perez. Thank you and good evening. Um, let's see. So here tonight to present the transportation improvement program for 2024 through 29. And the policy question is, should the council authorize staff to proceed with the adoption of the TIP for tonight? And um, as background information, so um, the six year plan is outlined in this document for all transportation related capital projects. Uh, under state law, we're required to update this annually. It is a requirement to do this plan for uh, grant eligibility, which contributes about half of um, our capital projects. Um, it must be financially constrained in that it has a reasonable chance of being funded within the next three years, if not six. It has to conform to regional air quality requirements and is adopted after a public hearing, which is why we're here tonight. So um, the council adopted prioritization criteria for these projects is whether it improves um, level of service, which is pretty much a, a measure of congestion, um, three different safety ratings, number of collisions, collision rates, and collision severity rates, whether a project is supportive of high occupancy vehicles and uh, non-motorized vehicles, um, level of community support within the neighborhood, air quality, ease of implementation, and a benefit cost ratio. Um, this map outlines um, where these projects are. Um, green is non-motorized improvements. Um, the blue is overlay projects. And uh, the purple is corridor improvements. And we have special designation for city center access phases one and two. Um, so. In the staff report, we didn't list any completed projects because they're not quite there yet, but they're really close. Um, and these two are um, the um, 47th Avenue Southwest at Highway 509, Dash Point Road in the roundabout, and um, the non-motorized project, Safe Route to School, on Dash Point Road at 312th to 21st Avenue Southwest in front of Lakota Park. So um, one project is proposed for addition this year, and that is um, the grade separation analysis for um, 21st Avenue South at South 320th Street. Um, another one is on 28th Avenue South from 312th to 308th Lane, providing sidewalks and street lights on the east side of the roadway. So um, options considered as first to approve the resolution adopting the TIP as presented, or two, do not forward, do not um, approve the draft document and provide direction to staff. And the uh, co recommendation from the mayor and land use and transportation committee was to approve the resolution as presented. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Perez. Uh, do we have any public comment? Do we have anything online? No, I don't. Okay, seeing none. Do I have a motion to uh, close the public hearing? I move to close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And Deputy Mayor Honda, I can't see you anymore, so you speak up if you have anything to say, okay? Oh, there you are. So, Council Member Dovey, do you have a motion? Yes, I move approval of the proposed resolution. I second. second. It's been moved and seconded to, to um, approve the proposed resolution for the transportation improvement plan. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We can't hear you, Deputy Mayor, but I can see you moving your mouth. <laughs> That's good enough. All right. And uh, let's see. On to council business. Now we're going to talk about selection of applicants to interview for the vacant council position number two. Is there any council discussion? 
Council Member Walsh. So, I, uh, I, I would simply like to say that after uh, going through the 18 applicants, uh, we have selected a number of applicants to, uh, to interview. And I, I move to select in no particular order the following individuals to be interviewed for council position number two, a, appointment at the June 26, 2023 City Council Special Meeting. And the individuals are Sadia Abdullah, Gordon Bach, Lana Bostic, Karen Bergato, Paul McDaniel, Tom Medhurst, and Anna Patrick. Thank you. Um, is there a second? I'll second it. That's been moved and seconded to interview, uh, let's see, that was seven, correct? Seven. Seven individuals for the uh, open position. Anybody have anything to say? Um, I do. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, where those are all very uh, excellent choices, I feel that out of courtesy to those who applied that we should interview all um, of the 18. And so therefore, as difficult as it will be, I will be voting against this because I feel that people took time to apply for the position and I would like to hear from all of them. So um, I will not be supporting this, but thank you very much. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Honda. And I will say that we had some excellent, excellent folks that applied and and it's really difficult we're very fortunate to have such um qualified people uh applying for our open seat uh councilman walsh did you have anything else you wanted to say uh no no i would like to say that. and uh, uh, council member seven dawson yeah on. and so we did have discussion and um one of the criteria that we really looked at is their involvement in the city was one of them and then some of the applications were really not complete so considering those two, I think, was one of the um, impetus for us to decide on where we are um, in this process. So, and Deputy Mayor, um, you know, you were not part of that conversation. I really am sorry that you weren't, but um, I do respect your um, comment. But I just want, also wanted you to understand that we did discuss about the application and um, the service to the city or their involvement with city with the city. Thank you, and I would also like to suggest that anyone who applied uh, uh, consider running for the council. I mean, it's, it, it, there's no book to read on how to do it. It's just simply jump in and get involved. So thank you all, and thank you all to those who applied and to, uh, as we move forward, um, we invite all of you to let us know what you think. This is a community uh, engagement process. We will be discussing this uh, over a couple of meetings, and uh, we will be doing it in public. So you're welcome to get involved. Um, we do, do we have those dates, Ryan? Yeah. Scheduled for the interviews? Monday, June 26th, 5 o'clock. And is there a second date? If needed, Thursday, the 29th at 5 o'clock, if needed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to just add one thing to Council Member Sepha Dawson's statement so that people listening understand. Um, this was discussed in executive session, and um, as I am not present because I am in Spokane, I was not able to attend executive session, and this was added on Friday to uh, the agenda, so uh, therefore I wasn't able to change my plans to be there. Um, so that's why I wasn't part of it, but I, I had talked to a couple council members about how what I felt, and so my opinion was given to to some people thank you uh, thank you deputy mayor and i did try to convey your opinions as you had given them to me yeah. thank you thank Council? you for clarifying yeah thank you so uh, there's been a motion and second all in favor aye 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 aye, aye. 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 motion carries it with, i'm sorry um, now we're going to have to have a, a voice vote yeah. nay thank yes you. okay uh, roll call vote council member Safa dawson aye council member tran Aye. Councilmember Walsh? Aye. Councilmember Dovey? Aye. Deputy Mayor Honda? Nay. Council President Kochmar? Aye. Motion carries 5-1. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. These are difficult things to deal with, so 
Moving forward. Hi, Keith. I'm sorry I took your thunder on rising <laughs> dust. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you did an awesome job. <laughs> uh, you know, I think part of the, the reason for that ceremony was not so much to celebrate taking down Target, which is an eyesore and a complete uh, weekly graffiti repainting for one of my staff, uh, but looking forward to what we can do with the property and how we can turn the corner and, and start working on our downtown. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So I think you're up to talk about something here, aren't you? So let's see, we're gonna talk about the next ordinance. Council Bill number 853, Ordinance View Protection Code Amendment. Stephanie, are you going to read that? I believe a presentation is going to come. Okay, first. that comes first. Thank you. Sorry. I'm <coughs> working on my technical skills. <laughs> and you're doing a great job, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So when the mayor gets back, tell him I ran it perfectly. No, no, <laughs> no problems. <laughs> Just a couple glitches, right? That's <laughs> exactly how I remembered it. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Council President, Deputy Mayor Honda, um, and Council Members, Keith Niven, Community Development Director. Uh, this evening, uh, you have first reading of an ordinance in front of you um, that is contemplating view protection in our downtown. And obviously, the view is of Mount Rainier. Um, the policy question in front of the City Council is, should the City Council amend Title 19 of the Federal Way Revised Code to protect views of Mount Rainier from public spaces downtown? And this proposed code amendment stems from um, an existing goal and policy in our comprehensive plan. Uh, goal City Center 20 says, consider protecting views from civic buildings and uses, such as the Performing Arts and Events Center, uh, for the enjoyment of citizens and then the policy is consider providing incentives and or adopt regulations for view protection of scenic vistas and the way that staff have interpreted um, that goal and policy is to uh, protect views of Mount Rainier um, specifically from the pack but we'll talk about that a little bit more as I move into the presentation so so part of this um, <laughs> task uh, was defining like what is the view of Mount Rainier that we're trying to protect. And so this is a, a photograph actually looking at Mount Rainier on a day that you could see Mount Rainier. Um, and from the pack, uh, and it's basically from about, you know, five feet up and looking at this area. So we created a polygon that is going to be in our city code that would basically say that um, to, uh, I'm losing my words, to um, penetrate this polygon uh, would actually be not allowed by the city code. Um, and so uh, part of the conversation, and that view there is from the pack, um, kind of the southeast corner of the building and the big long glass wall that um, we spent a bunch of money to create so we could have views of the mountain from that property. Um, we talked about uh, views from Town Square Park. And so what this slide shows is you can see right now, here's Mount Rainier. Um, and this is the existing sound transit track um, as it's heading towards uh, 320th. You can see this is uh, Center Plaza, um, and then the area that's mostly affected is the Sound Transit property. But because your vantage point is so much lower at Town Square Park than it is up at the pack, um, kind of the analysis is a lot different down at this level. And there was a request from Deputy Mayor Honda, and also the mayor has uh, some interest in us exploring uh, potentially putting a limitation uh, and preserving the view from the park as well. Uh, but because the geometries are so different, we need to actually do some analysis and figure out what this means. So rather than hold up the ordinance that's in front of the council tonight um, and potentially delaying its implementation, what we agreed to um, with the mayor is that staff would look at this and potentially bring a separate ordinance um, as it relates to Town Square Park. So what we also talked about at the Land Use and Transportation Committee was having more than one vantage point. Um, the, the 
camera shot that I showed earlier is from this location right here, which is viewpoint one. Um, the draft ordinance in front of the council this evening includes a viewpoint two, which talks about in between the two benches, kind of at the southwest corner of the plaza, and then a viewpoint three, which will be in the location of our future civic plaza that will be built as part of the TC3 redevelopment. So right now we'll have three vantage points. And what the code says is if you're within uh, the code construct is to create an overlay and the overlay will affect certain parcels and so if your parcel is one of those parcels that's within the overlay what the code says is you have to do a specific view analysis for your property and that you have to demonstrate that you're not going to penetrate that polygon that i showed earlier on the slide and so rather than trying to put some static numbers in our code we basically said you know, each property owner would have to go through this view analysis from these three different vantage points um, before we would approve a land use permit. So here's the overlay. It's this um, kind of, does it look brown? Yeah, black. Uh, the, the, so any of the parcels that are within this black uh, overlay area would be the ones that would be affected by this ordinance, um, and they would have to go through that separate uh, view analysis as part of their land use permit. So here's the criteria in the city code um, that we have to meet to do a code amendment. Um, staff's opinion is we meet all these criteria. Um, planning commission, uh, we took this through the planning commission. Uh, basically the planning commission's recommendation was to approve this, but they wanted us to do a little bit better um, job uh, delineating what the view was and where it was from. So that's why you see the actual photo that we're suggesting putting in the code so that there's no ambiguity as to what a view of Mount Rainier actually is. Um, it's actually a photograph that everybody can look at and there won't be any um, debate about, hopefully. And then the mayor's recommendation is to approve uh, the proposed code as recommended. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, is there any public comment? Nothing I online? Any, I do not have anyone signed up or anyone online. Okay. So, let's see. Stephanie, are you going to read the ordinance? Was there council discussion or you want me to move? Is there any discussion, I'm, council? I'm sorry, council member Dopey. Shouldn't I move to we propose it first before you read it? Or no, you read it first. I have no comment other than that. <laughs> read it first and then. Please that, read that so I can make I a motion. <laughs> All right, here we go. Council Bill 853, Ordinance View Protection Code Amendments, an ordinance of the City of Federal Washington, relating to incorporating view protection as a zoning overlay affecting limited properties in the City Center Core CC-C and City Center Frame CC-F zones, amending Federal Revised Code 19 1910 and adding a new chapter to 19 245 Federal Revised Code, including section 19245010. I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the July 5th, 2023 Council meeting for second reading and enactment. Second. It's been moved and seconded to move the proposed ordinance to the July 5th, 2023 Council meeting for second reading. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Now we're moving on to the next uh, council bill ordinance. Council bill number 854 ordinance, title 18 accessory dwelling units, ADU code amendments. And we are blessed to have Cheney Skateson, our senior planner, uh, discuss this for us. Thank you. Hi, good evening, uh, council president, coach Mar, uh, deputy mayor, Honda and the rest of the council. I'm Cheney Skatson, uh, senior planner, and I'm going to be uh, presenting two PowerPoint presentations tonight for two separate ordinances that are very related. Um, there are two ordinances and two presentations because there are two different chapters in our code that are being proposed for uh, code amendments to facilitate or encourage ADU production in the city. This first presentation is for Title 18, which is our subdivision code. Uh, the policy question is, should the City Council amend the Federal Way Revised Code Title 18 subdivisions to implement the Housing Action Plan Strategy Number 4 to encourage ADU productions? 
The next presentation will be on Title 19, the development regulations. So a lot of the uh, conversation, all of the meat of the changes are actually going to be in the next presentation. Uh, just some imagery of what some ADUs in and around uh, Federal Way in the Washington area, uh, what they can look like. Just some images. Uh, so just a reminder, in October of 2021, the City Council adopted the uh, Federal Way Housing Action Plan, which identified four main objectives and eight strategies. Strategy number four is to encourage ADU production. Um, and uh, by doing that would be to um, modify the development regulations to remove potential barriers to ADU production and then um, uh, streamline the process. And I had to jump because I had them out of order a little bit. So just to recap or to provide some context, uh, since 2021 to, sorry, 2001 to 2021, uh, there have been 60 ADU permits issued. Uh, those are land use decisions saying that, all right, the planner looked at your uh, proposal and uh, the location of your ADU and where you want to put it is fine. You meet all the regulations, good to go. Now, you, excuse me, now you can apply for your building permit. Uh, however, only 35 of those approved land use uh, ADUs or those land use approved ADUs have actually been built, uh, which is a, 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 a poor outcome. Uh, <clears throat> of those ADUs that were permitted, that got their land use um, their land use approval, uh, a major, uh, a slight majority were detached ADUs and a minority were attached. But when we look at that 35 number of how many were actually built, there's more um, coming to fruition as attached ADUs uh, than detached. Well, it's really minor. Um, if you look, if you think about it, these are pretty close, half and half. But just wanted to go over some trends. Uh, the proposed code amendments for Title 18, our subdivision code, is uh, to remove uh, a regulatory barrier that prohibits ADUs in cluster subdivisions. So uh, on, the, on the screen here is a description of what cluster subdivisions are uh, and the section of code that explicitly says that cluster lots are not eligible for ADUs. Um, the summary of our proposed solution is to uh, eliminate that section of code to uh, and, uh, enable or to expand uh, more ADU eligibility in future subdivisions that are cluster subdivisions. So as you can see on the screen here, the striking through that section of code is what's proposed. Um, staff believes that this, uh, code, this proposed code meets the development regulation amendment criteria. Uh, and in your packet and on the screen are a number of supporting uh, housing policies and goals from the comprehensive plan and a summary uh, of the procedural summary. A reminder of the policy question is, uh, should the city amend the Federal Way Revised Code, Title 18 subdivisions, to implement Housing Action Plan Strategy Number 4 to encourage ADU production? Thank you very much, Chaney. Thank you very much, Chaney. Uh, is there any public comment? No, I don't have any. Nothing online? Uh, Council, any discussion? Deputy Mayor Honda, I can't see you, so speak up if you do. Seeing none. Um, Stephanie, would you like to read the ordinance? Sure. Council Bill 854, Ordinance, Title 18, Accessory Dwelling Unit, ADU Code Amendments, an ordinance of the City of Federal Way, Washington, relating to accessory dwelling units, amending Federal Way Revised Code 18-55040. Is there a motion? I move to forward the, um, excuse me, the proposed ordinance, the July 5th, 2023 meeting for the second reading and enactment. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to move forward the proposed ordinance to July 5th council meeting for a second reading and enactment. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Moving forward to the next council bill, council bill number 855, ordinance, title 19, accessory dwelling unit, code amendments. Thank you. Here is part two uh, to our discussion. And I, uh, this won't be as fast as my last presentation, but I plan to kind of clip through if you have any questions or I uh, have more detailed slides if we want to you know discuss anything further uh, the policy question here is should the city amend federal Way revised code for title 19 development regulations to implement the housing action plan strategy number four encourage ADU productions the key issues and barriers identified in this section of the code include our permitting process uh, the cost to permit uh, to permit an ADU 
and uh, the restrictive regulations. So there's kind of three buckets here that all, um, all of the code amendments fall within one of these buckets. Uh, reminder on our uh, um, poor outcomes of the ADU, permitted ADUs actually being built. Um, and I think actually that's my point here. So the, the uh, something to um, draw, a conclusion to draw from this table or from this graph is that um, this is a two-step dance currently. Uh, an applicant who wants to build an ADU will apply for a land use permit, which will, uh, a planner will be assigned and review all the development regulations and approve or, you know, technical comment letter and amend uh, the proposal. And then uh, our current process is then the applicant will then get a conditional approval to then apply for a building permit. There will be a number of snags like uh, recording a covenant at the King County, um, at King County. And then they'll apply for the building permit. And uh, the exact review that occurred with the land use permit, the planner will do again. Ensuring that the parking is actually on site and ensuring that the lot coverage doesn't exceed, um, doesn't exceed the um, maximum lot coverage, the height of the structure isn't taller than the primary dwelling unit. Um, and the proposed code amendments here are to streamline that inefficiency and boil it down to a uh, one permit process. And uh, a, a, to number two, the, the barrier of the, of the cost for an ADU uh, to build an ADU. I'm not to build, to be permitted to build an ADU in the city. So um, there currently is a land use permit, which is I think in, in 2023, uh, <laughs> I think it's over like $620, might be $612, something like that. And then, um, but in this pie graph here, you can see the breakdown of the categories of what it costs to get an ADU permitted um, with the, uh, the school impact fees and the building permit making up large majorities, or not majorities, large portions of the cost. So by uh, removing the land use review, we would be removing the dark purple portion of this pie chart. And another uh, way to reduce the cost is to eliminate or allow ADUs to be exempt from school impact fees. Uh, now I'm going to dive into that third bucket of those restrictive regulations. Uh, here's a map with uh, yellow and purple, the purple being those neighbors, neighborhoods or lots in the city that don't meet the minimum lot size, therefore currently are uh, excluded from eligible to, to be eligible for an ADU. So uh, this is a simple fix, uh, remove the requirement to meet the minimum lot size. Uh, currently, a prefabricated or manufactured structure can't be an ADU, and uh, there are quite a few uh, prefab or manufactured um, ADU developers, or I don't know, um, companies in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, they're a very common product and something that we get asked about a lot. So uh, to remove the, a barrier, a regulatory hurdle would be to, instead of prohibit these, allow them. Uh, there are a number of uh, regulations. One that Barbara mentioned earlier is that currently our maximum size of an ADU is limited to 800 square feet or, or and 40% of the primary structure. So if you have a small house, say you have a 1,000 square foot house, the ADU can't be more than 400 square feet. The, um, this is an issue because sometimes you have a really big lot and have a lot of room for another structure and uh, don't want to be limited to only 40% of that primary structure. The proposed code amendment is to increase the size uh, to allow it to be up to 1,000 square feet and to um, remove the percentage of the primary structure component. Uh, also, ADUs aren't allowed to be taller than a primary structure, which uh, is unfortunate for some typologies that have like a carriage where it's a parking or a garage under an apartment on top, which is um, desirable for some um, uh, applicants, but if it's a single story structure, uh, that can be prohibitive. Uh, also, um, another, uh, I'm going to go back to the maximum size. So I said that we uh, the proposal is to increase it up to 1,000 square feet. And then also, if it's an attached dwelling unit, and a, um, 
it's either like the basement or the attic. The floor plate of the house is, uh, the uh, ADU is allowed to meet the floor plate of that story of the primary structure. So currently right now, if someone wants to convert their basement to an ADU, uh, we require them to put up some walls and reclassify a, a portion of that, of that story as storage, because it can't be living space, which is um, just it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, Another uh, issue is that a lot of, uh, of the development pattern in the city has houses built right on the 20-foot front yard setback. And uh, being able to accommodate more parking on the site can be really challenging with our current regulations that don't allow more than a 20-foot front yard setback. Uh, oh, sorry, don't, don't allow more than a 20-foot um, wide driveway in the front yard unless you meet a certain criteria, and so the provision, uh, proposed provision would be to allow ADUs to be one of that criteria. So in summary, the proposed solutions are to streamline the permitting process, to reduce the costs for ADU production, and to remove those regulatory barriers. And I will we'll cover this again really fast. So uh, to amend the permit and review process section of the code to exempt ADUs from the land use review, allowing applicants to go straight to building permits and uh, to remove the owner occupancy requirement. When I mentioned earlier the conditional approval, that's uh, currently we require that uh, owner of the property live in either the ADU or the primary dwelling unit for six months out of the year, uh, which has to be uh, then a, a, a covenant recorded at King County and uh, is just another thing that could hold up a building permit issuance. And uh, so the proposal is to remove that requirement, not. Um, for, for streamlined permitting, but also since uh, this isn't something that uh, staff saw a lot of value in. And oh, reducing the cost. So by removing the land use permit, we then reduce the, or remove the land use permit fee and then exempting ADUs from school impact fees. And um, expanding eligibility was the cluster, allowing them in cluster subdivisions, allowing them on legally non-conforming lots allowing, uh, okay, size and dimension, allowing ADUs to be taller than the primary dwelling unit, uh, allow the ADUs up to 1,000 square feet, up to, or up to one floor of a, one floor area of an attached, for an attached ADU, uh, and to allow prefabricated, manufactured, or outdoor storage containers that are often uh, being retrofitted, generally by a, a, a company is doing this, because uh, it still needs to meet all the building codes, which would be, um, I, I imagine really difficult if you're doing it yourself, a DIY. Uh, and then uh, there's a couple more um, to for site and use considerations to allow or flexibility for meeting your parking requirements and uh, to allow home occupations in an ADU, which currently aren't allowed. But the same provisions that we allow home occupations in the primary dwelling unit would apply. Um, staff believes that these code, uh, these proposed code amendments meet the development regulation amendment criteria. And uh, here are a number of uh, comprehensive plan goals and policies. There's a couple more on this slide than there was in the last, since uh, more apply here. Just a reminder of that policy question, should the city amend Federal Way Revised Code Title 19 development regulations to implement the Housing Action Plan Strategy Number 4 to encourage ADU production? Thank you very much, Cheney. Um, is there any public comment? Stephanie? We did online. have someone online who had raised their hand. Actually, now we have two people, Kathy Williams and Tony. So Thomas will unmute one of them at a time. Thank you, Council. Um, hi. Um, I just have a question about the specifications. Regarding the um, dwelling units, like how 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 far for it to be um, in fire code? Maybe I'm too soon with this question, but you'll let me know. Um, like how many feet from the house can this um, um, unit be? And then perhaps from our fence. And that's my only question. And thank you for your time. God. Great question. Um, so I'm going to answer your second question first because I know that was certainty. Um, and ADU uh, wouldn't, is not currently being proposed to be allowed within the required yard setbacks. It depends on your zone. So if you're in a single family zone area, 
uh, 5.0, 7.2, 9.6, or 15, RS-15, those are all referring to the minimum lot size. Your required yard setbacks are 20 feet from the front, five feet from the side, and five feet from the rear, and uh, no structures unless it meets, uh, unless it's uh, specifically called out in the code, uh, are allowed within those required yard setbacks. If you're in an a even larger um, minimum lot size zone like RS-35, I think your side yard setbacks are 10 feet. So at a minimum, your the ADU would not be closer than five feet from the property line. Um, in terms of a, a detached ADU, a distance from a primary structure, uh, that is, there is a section in code that talks about the that distance, and I, I am not confident in, that I'm gonna get it right by saying it right now, so, um, I, you know. I, yeah, so um, that's an issue with fire code. So it depends on the construction type of both the existing structure and the ADU. So you could put them relatively close to each other. It depends on the amount of openings within those walls that are adjacent to each other. You basically need to create a two-hour fire separation, which can be done through construction materials, but otherwise it can be done by horizontal separation. Thank you. <clears throat> is there a second? There is. We have Tony on the line. And Tony, if you can give us your last name for the record. Uh, Duan, D-I-W-A-N. Go ahead, Tony. OK, so so yeah, so I'm a builder. I uh, built homes in Federal Way and, and Tacoma. Um, and ADUs, uh, ADUs in, in, that we've been building have been really successful. Um, so I just want the city to understand that, um, you know, they've been really successful. The owner occupancy requirement uh, that's being lifted by some cities, uh, Tacoma in particular, I think there's some other ones too. Um, they're really helpful. Um, we have we've keep a lot of them for rentals, but then we also sell some. And, and uh, we've been checking on the ones we've sold and they're being well maintained. And it's a good way to get you know, people, with, especially with the high interest rates, to have a, an additional income if they want to live there or an investor to rent them out and, and maintain them. Um, I would say, though, that I've built host houses in Federal Way that the permit staff, including the gal speaking earlier, very, very friendly. Um, everyone's really nice compared to other cities where we get a lot of pushback and everyone's so, so grumpy. So I do want to tell uh, the council that the city staff has been amazing ever since I've, you know, you know, I remember when I built my first house, they, they had balloons for me, and it was really cool. Um, <laughs> but, you know, really, really friendly people, way better than other cities. But the impact fees are high, so not having those impact fees would be huge for us because I build apartment buildings, too, and sometimes I look at apartment buildings in Federal Way, and, and the cost of the permit fees are more than the land itself, versus in Tacoma, I could, there's no impact fees. They just have a permit cost. Um, so when you add all those impact fees with water hookups and sewer hookups and all these things. And, and Lake Haven has a very specific list on who we can use. Uh, so there's only like a few contractors. So all those costs add up. It's more than the land itself. And it makes it hard for people like me to build affordable houses and federal ways where I grew up. And, and I, I want to keep building there, but I haven't done it in a while just because of the fees. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I think, you know, you see a lot of big developers build in, in federal way, like tons, you know, like up and down each you know, major road in Federal Way, but small guys like myself who are born and raised, you know, South King County, Pierce County guys, we, we're not really building, you know, up, you know, fourplexes, duplexes. And so if this ADU thing works and there's not so many impact fees, we'll definitely be building a lot more. That's all. Well, thank you very much, Tony and, and Cheney and Keith. Thank you for the balloons. That's a great <laughs> idea. Thank you. Okay. So no, no other comment? No one else. All right, uh, council. Do you have any uh, council member? Oh, we have a. You're not going to make a motion yet, are you? I have a comment. Go ahead, council member Dovey. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. This has been something we've been working on a long time. The only thing that I would mention, uh, we do not have school fees. Um, we do probably we do have some, but we do have a parks fee that has been enacted on every door in Federal Way. So when we talk about no fees. It's right, we've reduced them, but we did just pass a park impact fee or to, for maintenance, so I don't want people to walk away thinking there's no fees. There is a park fee that was passed last council meeting. But it's uh, minimal compared to what this school yeah. fee was, though. Thank you. OK, 
Council Member Sefa Dawson. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, I've, I've been watching um, Tiny Houses, and so I actually think this is a great uh, way to have people, especially single adults, live close to their families, to their children, adult children. But um, I just think those shows are really amazing, and I've been excited about even like trying something like that. So I um, just wanted to share that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Honda, do you have anything to say? Uh, no, I think that this is a good idea, but I was talking with uh, someone uh, about ADUs who is in the business, and apparently it's difficult to get funding to build ADUs at this point. So that's something that we as a council don't have much say over, but um, it could be potentially a reason why we don't get a lot of ADUs until the funding issues are worked out. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Cheney, uh, what is the average cost for a detached ADU? It really depends. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen some that are uh, like starting at 300000 so some are not very cheap. Um, uh, there are, I believe, uh, there are some on like, uh, like Amazon. You could <laughs> get like a kit and build it yourself. It needs to be building code and there'll be inspections and, you know, building permit and stuff. But I don't have, I don't have an average for you. You know, back in the 40s, they had Sears Roebuck offered kits for houses. They were, they were, they were being built. They were called craftsmen. There you go. Yeah, they were. <laughs> uh, I have a couple questions, if you don't mind. So with the detached ADUs, uh, is there any requirement that the, uh, the lot be on sewers? Because we do have some lots that are on septic. Uh, we talked about this last time, <laughs> and um, there the requirements that we would uh, uh, hold a new single-family development to, we'd hold the ADU to. So I, I don't. Okay. So know if you want to septic that. tank a field. So I think um, I think the answer is, you know, if you if you ha if you owned a piece of property that didn't have access to sewer, and you wanted to build an ADU, um, you would have to have adequate capacity in your drain field yeah. to be able to accommodate the extra fixtures <laughs> that would drain to it. So if you could demonstrate that to King County satisfaction, ah. that's all we would require oh. um, in terms of... So you wouldn't need a separate drain field. It could be the same drain field. I think it could be the same because it's still the same piece of property, uh -huh. right? Okay. Sure. So, and that was my other question. Is, is this because they talked about selling it. It, it. These are not, they are not a separate lot, but you could still sell it separately? Um, right now, um, there, there's, there, there are two structures on a single lot. Uh -huh. So they're still under one ownership. Okay, okay. All right, just curious. So, Council Member Doby. I think we need to, do we need to read first? Read that ordinance. Stephanie. Council Bill 855, Ordinance, Title 19, Accessory Dwelling Unit, ADU Code Amendments. An ordinance of the City of Federal Washington relating to accessory dwelling units amending Federal Revised Code 19 0510910910950040 19150040 19150040 19-195-180, 19-200-180, 19-200-180, 19-200-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-180, 19-190-
boards and committees amending federal revised code 245 2450250 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260 2500260
bigger and better. And so I just wanted to say thank you to Tirza for that work. Um, today is uh, World Refugee Day, and this is to honor people who have been forced to flee their home countries, either due to persecution, due to war, famine, um, economic opportunities and stuff. And so um, the theme for this year was um, hope away from home. And I, as an immigrant, I did not come to this country as a refugee. However, I came as a student um, to pursue higher education and um, stayed, ended up staying here because I needed medical attention that I would not have received um, if I had gone back and my quality of life would not have been the same. And here I am today and I also want to acknowledge uh, Huang here who's um, sitting with me and um, we're both immigrants and refugees who are here and we've come to a welcoming state, a welcoming city and that's why we have this opportunity to sit here in front of you and be in a leadership role and so I'm just grateful for that. So. Thank you very much Councilmember Sefadasan. Both you and Councilmember Tran have been through a lot so thank you. Councilmember Tran came on a, on a boat with his family. Very, very difficult from Vietnam. Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. My daughter-in-law also immigrated from uh, Vietnam as a, as a tiny little baby. Uh, she lived for her first three or four years on an island in the ocean before she was able to get to this country. And so um, we're glad she's here because she's an amazing woman and a great mom to my two little grandkids. Um, I just want to say that I really encourage people to enjoy um, to go to the Federal Way Historical Society and see what they have there. They're saving our history, and it's basically a volunteer organization. They, uh, they spend hours and hours doing this, and um, I would also encourage you to become a member. They have membership fees that range from just a few dollars to thousand dollars if you can contribute that much but the more, more membership they get the more um, it enables them to apply for different kinds of grants to show that they have the backing of our community so i would really encourage you especially our council members to become members it is a small thing you can do to show your support for the historical society and for what they do the art show that we saw tonight I was uh, chair of the art, Arts Commission when that started, and I'm so glad to see it still continuing because uh, it was Judge Larson's idea, and he, he brought it to the Arts Commission, and we worked through all the details and made it happen, and he has continued to make it happen along with the Arts Commission every year since, and just a, a great program. And um, I would also encourage you to it, attend the Make Music events this, this weekend. It's an awesome thing that this is in our community. It's not in every community. It's in our community, and it's great. I did a, attend a Juneteenth event in the park, and um, I would have liked to have seen more people there. I, maybe it was because the weather was pretty cold. Um, you know, we went from 80 degrees down to, I think, 60 degrees that day, so it was kind of chilly. Uh, hopefully that event grows and grows, and um, I did attend the event at Dumas Bay also. And um, Council Member Walsh, the Lions Club is a part of Flag Day. They have been for years. They make the awesome hot dogs that we all enjoy after the event. So they are a good, big part of Flag Day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Council Member Seva Dawson will be on our way to see you very shortly. Uh, Council Member um, President Kochmar has no report, but Acting Mayor uh, Kochmar has this to say, you're all sworn to secrecy. We did very well tonight when the mayor comes back. No problem. Everything went smoothly, right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. So have a wonderful evening. We are now adjourned at... Um, Goodness, I don't know, whatever time it is. 829. 829. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good night.